Hi everyone, Dr. Nani Burns here. Listen up if you're feeling stuck in the delivery zone of TOEFL speaking test. This video is for you, but really anyone who wants to polish their English speaking skills. So delivery basically means getting your thoughts from your brain to the listener's ears like a pizza delivery guy. And in this case, the listener is your TOEFL rater, so you gotta make sure they get every word you say crystal clear. Now, there are a bunch of things you can do to ace that delivery score, but today we're gonna tackle one sneaky mistake I see students make all the time. Messing up their pauses. Those little silences between words can make a world of difference. Pausing is not just about taking a breath when you run out of air. Silence through pausing conveys as much meaning as the words themselves. Think of it like adding punctuation to your speech. When you don't pause correctly, not only does it sound awkward, but the meaning can change. Just like when you pronounce words incorrectly and they become harder to understand. In principle, you can pause anywhere in a sentence if it makes the silences speak. By pausing right before or after a keyword, we can make listeners pay attention to that word like a spotlight. For example, I am inevitable. I am Iron Man. However, in most situations, when you pause unexpectedly at an awkward point in a sentence, you can be misunderstood. Consider this example. Thank you. Your donation just helped someone. Get a job. We are unsure how these three sentences cohere. The sentences together communicate a strange meaning since the speaker is thanking the listener as well as commanding the listener to find a job. The utterance makes sense when we get rid of the second pause as follows. Thank you. Your donation just helped someone get a job. Arranged in this way, we can understand that the speaker is thanking the listener because the listener helped someone get a job. As we can see, where we pause makes a great difference in meaning. Indeed, the most important reason we pause should be to make meaning clear. Consider these two sentences. Let's eat, Grandma. Let's eat, Grandma. The first sentence is spoken without a pause. In this case, Grandma becomes the object of eating. Surely this cannot be the intended meaning. The intended meaning should be that grandma is the person addressed by the speaker. The second sentence, spoken with a brief pause after eat, conveys the correct meaning. The example shows that pausing reveals the syntax of a sentence. Let's consider some more examples. Without a pause, the following sentence is ambiguous. They invited Bob and Bill and Al got rejected. We cannot be sure whether Bill and Al got rejected or only Al got rejected. In writing, we use a comma to remove the ambiguity. For example, They invited Bob and Bill and Al got rejected. They invited Bob and Bill and Al got rejected. When we speak, a pause does the job. These are similar examples. There were old men and women. They are four hour long exams. I saw him with the binoculars. All these sentences are ambiguous. Old men and women can mean old men and women, or old men and old women. With a pause, we know which is which. Old men and women, which means that only men are old. Old men and women, which means that both men and women are old. Regarding four hour long exams, without a pause, 
We cannot tell whether it means exams that took four hours or four exams that took one hour each. With a pause, we can tell which is which. Four hour long exams, which means that the exams took four hours. Four hour long exams, which means that the four exams took one hour each. Regarding with the binoculars, the prepositional phrase can modify him or saw. Without a pause, with the binoculars modifies him, but with a pause it modifies saw. I saw him with the binoculars means he has the binoculars. I saw him with the binoculars means I have the binoculars. As these examples show, if we pause in the wrong place, people will have difficulty understanding us or will misunderstand us. When we pause effectively, our listeners can follow our message easily, quickly, and clearly. So how should we pause? We should pause by grouping related ideas, called thought groups, which we learn in the next section.